Okay, I think we are working. Hi, welcome again to my backyard. Okay, let me get the introductions going. Welcome everyone. My name is Elena and you're joining us for another episode of Cola Vida Cooking Live. Brought to you in my backyard. Welcome. It's nice out. The flowers are blooming out there in the forest, as I like to call it. And the grill is getting warmed up because today we have, I'm checking the computer for the live feed to make sure you can see me. Seems like you can. Okay. Today we are making Thai grilled skirt steak. Now this is essentially a marinade recipe. And since the summer is upon us, you'll see that the sun is coming out right now. <laughs> it's getting warmer. We want to fire up those outdoor grills because, I mean, if you have one, it's really a great thing to make use of in the summertime. Actually, I use mine in the winter too, but I love outdoor grilling. So I wanted to show you this recipe. And if you have, let's see, if you can leave comments, hello Mary Eileen and Jafar and everybody is here. Hi Mike, <laughs> grilling time, it sure is. If you leave your comments in Facebook, I will be able to respond to them. And if you're on Instagram, our wonderful social media manager, Camelia, will be able to fire those questions over into Facebook for me. So fire your questions away. And speaking of fire, grill. Okay, so the grill is, ooh, it's getting all warmed up. I want my grill to be about 450 degrees, so I'm just gonna fiddle with the dials here. And now we are going to talk about steak. So I have this skirt steak, and it's not a fancy piece of meat. It's rather thin, as you'll see. I'm gonna show you very thin and it has, it's a really nice color and it has some really nice fat marbling. Fat means flavor for meats like this. So that is really good. And I picked this because it really is a great steak for absorbing marinades. You know, if I'm making a filet mignon, I kind of just want to taste the meat. So a little salt, pepper, olive oil is mostly what I want to do to that. But for something like this, it's, I, I want to add some interesting flavors to this. I'm going to cut it really thinly after I cook it up and maybe add it to a salad or serve it alongside some rice and roasted vegetables. So it's a great blank slate type of cut of meat that you can flavor as you will. So that is what we're going to do. And today we have a Thai flavored inspired marinade. We have a lot of marinade recipes on colavita.com. So if you head over to our website at colavita.com, there is a whole section for marinade recipes that we've curated, especially because of this episode and because of summer, we thought you might be interested. So head over there and while you're there, if you haven't, please do sign up for our newsletter so you can get recaps, you can get product recommendations, all our fancy blog posts of which we have many. Um, so you're going to want to do that. Okay, let's get started. So is this gluten free? It is gluten free. That is a great question. Yeah. Um, all of, well, you know, not necessarily all your marinades will be gluten free. It certainly uh, depends on what you put in them. For example, soy sauce isn't all, always gluten free. I'm not using soy in this recipe, but you can find gluten free substitutes for that kind of stuff. So this one is our base is the lovely Cola Vita extra virgin olive oil. This is our premium Italian blend, um, which is all Italian olives. And this is a bolder flavor. It's peppery, which I think is going to go really nice with our Thai flavors, which I will explain. So I have here a measuring cup and I am going to add one quarter cup of my Cola Vita Italian. In we go. I love that color. It's like this golden color that's so beautiful. Okay. So what makes this a Thai flavored dish? Well, a couple of things. 
Um, we do have, for example, this um, sesame oil. So I'm using a little bit of sesame oil. I always use sesame oil in small amounts. And the reason I like it is because it really has a strong flavor. Um, and I think, you know, for Asian Pacific Rim type of dishes, like this is a great sesame oil, just a little bit. I'm adding three tablespoons to this for the marinade. And for this marinade, I'm actually, I'm gonna add half of it to the steak to marinate it. Then I'm gonna reserve the other half for a little bit later to kind of like serve with it as a little drizzle. So I'm making a little bit more than maybe I would if I were just marinating. Okay, so we've got our sesame oil and our Cola Vita extra virgin olive oil. Then I've got my fish sauce. So I don't know if you're familiar with fish sauce, but it is often used in Asian recipes. I've been using it quite frequently um, and I really like it. It is a powerful flavor. This is three tablespoons. Um, it's going right in. It will, it smells and don't be alarmed. It can be off putting to some, but embrace it because it really packs like a nice umami punch. And with a red meat, I, I recommend it highly. Approach with caution. Terrific marinade. Thank you. Hi, Arlene. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, so we've got our marinade for our skirt steak is so far olive oil, sesame oil, and fish sauce. Now, we also have about three tablespoons of lime juice. So we're going to add that to, I think an acid is really important in a marinade. Um, you could use Cola Vita white wine vinegar, and I do that many, many times. So our vinegar line is great, great for marinades. For this one, I add the lime just for that little added Thai flavor. So that's what I do there. Then I have one tablespoon of honey. So I want just a, a wee bit of sweetness here. So I'm going to put that in. Okay. Get in there. Okay, so we've got one tablespoon of honey. Now I have some exciting stuff. I have, this is exciting stuff. Okay, I have garlic, ginger, and one of my all-time favorite Cola Vita products, hot chili peppers. So I have about a tablespoon of minced garlic and a tablespoon of minced ginger. You could go heavier or lighter on those depending on what you prefer, but those are sort of my baselines. And then I have three of these hot chili peppers. This is a Cola Vita product. These are pretty spicy, I have to say. I think a lot of Thai recipes do have some hot pepper in them, and this is what I use. I think it's a really nice flavor. They come packed in olive oil, and I kind of just snip them with a scissor into really tiny little pieces. I leave the seeds in there, the whole thing. And so those are gonna go in. Okay. Checking for questions. <laughs> Aw. Leave out the fish sauce. I've left it ever since. Do you think it's an important addition? So you could add, I really do actually like the flavor, but if you have an aversion to it, because it is so strong, you could use a little bit of soy sauce or tamari. Basically, you, fish sauce has some sodium, and I'm, I'm actually using that to season my meat. So if you're not going to use fish sauce, I would salt the meat and or use a soy sauce. Um, soy sauce has a lot of sodium in it too, so you could use that instead. I think it will give it a little bit of a different flavor. Fish sauce is, it's very specific, <laughs> but I think soy sauce would return a really nice marinade. Okay, so I'm gonna whisk this. Make sure that it's all whisked up and it turns this really nice amber color. Let me see, okay. So just so you know, I, I have my favorite Cola Vita recipes. I, I write many of them. And this one um, I wrote last year, or last summer, and I have made it many times since then. It is a great way to get dinner on the table fast, quickly, whichever grammatically you prefer. 
And I mean, it just comes together in a flash and it's really flavorful. So I've made it many, many times, just so you know. Okay, so I've got my marinade here. I've got my skirt steak and I've got it in a baking dish, but you can use any kind of shallow plate or bowl. Basically, you wanna coat this in the marinade, about half of it, I'm gonna save the other half. And then we're gonna refrigerate this for about 24 hours. Hmm. Okay. So that's about half. And I'm gonna save the other half for drizzling. And I'm just gonna make sure my all of my meat gets nice and coated in that marinade. You can flip it around if you want. And then I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. That is what I would do. Now, just because I wanted to be super accurate for you guys, I already marinated one yesterday. Yes, I did. The Magic Kitchen. I'm gonna put that over there, which is probably not a good idea, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, so this is my marinated steak. I put this one in a, in a sheet pan. So it's on there. Okay. I had to wrap it up because I it's a little buggy out here today. It's a little humid. I didn't want the bugs landing on my nice piece of, of skirt steak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not easily found. Try hanger steak. Is it easily found in my hmm? You could substitute flank. So Arlene's asking for substitute cuts. So skirt steak for me, very easy to find at my local supermarket. But if you can't, maybe a hanger, you could I mean anything that's thinly cut, I would go to your butcher. Always make friends with your butcher. I have made friends with mine and it's really great because I can call ahead. I can ask, what can I use for this? So any thin cut of meat, I would say, you could also do if you had to chop some steak um, and marinate it for skewers, that would be something you could do with this marinade also. So it's very flexible, keep that in mind. Okay, how many days in advance can I do this? I wouldn't do it more than 48 hours in advance. You know, I keep it to 24, but you could probably push it to two days if you really wanted to. Okay, we're gonna go on the grill. Ooh, we, we kinda need to lower the heat a second. Let's chat some more. <laughs> we'll, we'll just air it out a second. If I look away for a moment, this thing, it gets really, really hot. So we're just gonna bring it down. So another thing, you know, this cooks really quickly. I'm gonna do about three minutes per side. Um, and the tail piece is a little bit thinner than up here. so. Part of your steak might be a little bit more well done. If you wanted to be super accurate, what you could do is you could slice that thin piece and kind of cook it separately and cook it for a shorter amount of time. Little extra effort, but if you want perfectly cooked steak the way you like it, then I might recommend you do that. Okay, so what about coconut liquid aminos, Camelia asks. Yes, coconut liquid aminos would be a great substitute for soy sauce. Um, not sure how they stack up on the fish sauce flavor, but you could definitely try that here. So we're looking for basically olive oil base with a little sesame oil for flavor. Then you want something to add that umami and salt. So a fish sauce will do that, a soy sauce, coconut, aminos, something like that that will add the umami and the salt. And then you want your flavors, the cilantro, the garlic, the ginger, and then the spice of the hot peppers. So that's kind of the base. Oh, and don't forget the acids, lime juice or vinegar, lime juice in this case. So when you've got your marinades, it's your oil base, then your acid, then you've got your umami with the salt, and then we've got our flavors. So that's kind of how we're layering it in. And you can see how you could change things, alter them. We can talk about different marinades if you want in just a second. You could fold the tail over the top to prevent overcooking. So Arlene says, um, I got a few questions here. So Arlene says that you could flip that tail over so it doesn't overcook. Yes, you could totally do that. The only drawback to that is then you won't get your nice fancy grill marks on all your steak. 
but that is definitely recommended and recommended if you're cooking inside, which Camelia asks, because we have a lot of apartment dwellers that may not have a grill. So yes, you can definitely cook this inside. You could roast it in your oven, similar timing, same temperature. Um, you could do a grill pan option. If you've got one of those fancy little gizmos, you could definitely do that. Okay, we're gonna go in, doctor. Here we go. I have somewhere metal tongs. Very important for grilling. And I'm gonna open this up. And I'm just gonna sweep off any excess. Lay it on there. Oh my gosh, it smells good already. Okay, three minutes. And we can talk about marinades. Just making sure I get the right timing. Okay, 319. All right, so marinades. Let's talk a little bit more. If you have any, what would I normally serve this with? That's a great question too. Okay, so tonight, I think what I'm gonna serve this with is I have some really nice roasted vegetables. So I have some asparagus. I also have these really cute cherry tomatoes I was gonna throw on the grill and maybe some little roasted potatoes, you know, those tiny ones that you can quarter up. I've been putting them in my air fryer. They're so good that way. I'm gonna do that. Or if I wanted to go totally on the Thai side, maybe I would make some coconut rice. Ooh, I love the coconut rice. And then crush a few peanuts on top of the coconut rice with a little bit more cilantro and lime wedges and serve that steak on the side with some other veggies. Green beans are lovely too. Um, so that's what I would do. I would do a veggie, probably a, a coconut rice. I love that stuff. So yeah, that would be good. The other thing you could do is, you know, this makes great uh, like lunch salad leftovers. So I'm gonna slice it thinly and then, you know, I could put that on top of a green salad. So maybe some arugula or kale um, with a nice lime dressing and you know all kinds of other vegetables avocado for sure maybe a little sesame seeds sprinkle on top it's very versatile um all right I'm, thank you i know i have so many birds back here arlene says she loves hearing the birds i've been watching them we have some cardinals <laughs> there are at least like two or three cardinals that i see from time to time we also do have some blue jays and a lot of robins and right now they are out, but they are out all the time. And they actually wake me up in the morning singing right outside my window. It's really nice. So <laughs> it's fun to have them. We also have a ton of chipmunks and two groundhogs that live under the shed back there. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So other marinades. I'm watching my time here. Um, so we have a wonderful balsamic chicken marinade um, that's on our website on the link that I told you to go to at colavitarecipes.com. Hopefully we can post that link in the comments here so you can go directly to marinades. Do not pass any other recipes. Um, and that is for grilled chicken breast using colavita olive oil, colavita balsamic vinegar. It's a really, really great um, marinade. Checking my temperature here. Look at this, it's 450, I'm so excited. Okay, that one is really nice. So again, you have your base, your olive oil, your balsamic vinegar, which acts as your acid, but also that balsamic is also gonna give you a little umami. You're gonna have to add your salts, and then I believe there's some other herbs. Um, that's a really nice one. We also have, which we are not making today, the recipe for the herb marinated salmon, which is so, 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 so good. I believe I make that one with the Cola Vita white wine, white balsamic vinegar. And I actually warm that up. Oh, you're getting the landscapers now. Yay. <laughs> this is real life, people. I'm gonna talk a little louder over the weed whackers. <laughs> the birds too. Um, so that one, I actually warm up. Oh, we gotta flip. on how much 
how you like your meat cooked. So I'm going for medium rare. So I'm gonna do probably about two and a half minutes. You know, feel free to get yourself a meat thermometer so you can more accurately, accurately take the temperature of your meat and that will help you a lot. So, you know, usually about 145-ish for medium to medium rare. So you judge what you like your meat to be at. Um, it's universal, <laughs> that's good, life. <laughs> it's like, oh, I really just hope the landscapers don't show up. Uh, alas, yeah. Okay, so I think I was talking about the salmon marinade. Um, we have a bit of a, we're gonna do something different this week. So the Thai skirt steak one, we're not gonna do the salmon on Thursday. I know, it's a great recipe. I actually made it just the other day. I make it all the time. Um, but we're not gonna do that one because we're gonna do a wild card. Yeah. So we thought maybe people don't wanna see the loser so much of the poll. So we're switching it up and we're gonna do a wild card on Thursday. I'm not gonna tell you what it is though, but I'm really, really excited. So if you guys like Italian food, if you like me screaming over landscapers, tune in on Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I believe they're coming up the driveway. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have that much more to do. <laughs> okay. take this off the grill <laughs> hey hang on one second could you guys give me like five or ten minutes coming back. They're so nice. <laughs> okay, now we have our meat. Look how beautiful it is. We are going to let it rest. This is a very important step with all protein after you cook it to let it rest. So we're going to chat for about five minutes and let this rest. And then I'm going to slice it for you and we're going to give it a little taste. So it looks really good. I'm pretty happy, but I don't want to touch it. Plus, I just want to let it rest. Okay. I'm gonna close this. I have to remember to turn off my propane, very important. It's a very important part, important step of the grilling process to turn off the propane. <laughs> I will, I think I will give, maybe I'll make them a sandwich, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> they're so nice. I knew, I knew that would happen. All right, so now we have this. Now. A few things I'm going to do, I'm going to dress it up, I'm going to give it a little, ex some accessories while we wait. So I have these beautiful scallions that I sliced, and I sliced them on the angle. So you can just kind of decorate your steak with a few extra scallions. It's really hard to explain to you know, it's like, hey, I'm doing this cooking show live outside. That's normal, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. So a couple scallions, you could maybe serve a few more on the side if you wanted to. And then I do have some chopped peanuts. Yeah, I might reserve these for the jasmine rice to sprinkle on top of, but I'll do a few. Sometimes a little crunch is nice. This would also be great if you were doing this as a salad to do a few extra little chopped peanuts on the salad. That would be really great. This is looking pretty good. And then what you could do if you really wanted to, you could put a few extra hot peppers on top, but I do have my reserved marinade from, uh, 
from the other day. So what I might do is just take that and there are a few extra little peppers in here and just maybe drizzle it on top for a little extra flavor. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty nice. That is the whole show. Okay, I want to give it like two more minutes, so bear with me and then I will cut it up for you. So other than, let's see, the salmon recipe, that has white balsamic vinegar, it has smoked paprika, it has cilantro and parsley, there's a ton of herbs. Um, that one is excellent. The balsamic chicken marinade is really good. This one, you know, there are all kinds of marinades that you can make and um, I really recommend doing that over the summer because it's a great way to dress up your meat and get into grilling and then you get all this flavor into your protein and you haven't really done anything. There's no time commitment hardly. You just whisk that up, put it in the fridge and then forget about it for like a day. Um, all right. Oh. Spilling. My table is kind of on an angle because my, my backyard goes up a hill. So, okay. Could you do tent while resting? This is a great question. Um, Mary Eileen asks if you should tent your meat while you're resting. If you're outside, probably. It'll prevent the bugs from getting on it. I don't necessarily think you need to do it. When I do use foil to tent is when, for example, I might after the meat comes out of the oven or off the grill, for example, if I'm doing a filet, I might do like a butter and blue cheese um, little pat on top and then the tent will create the steam and help it melt and like get all into that um, meat. So I might do it then. Or if I have a whole chicken, I might tent the chicken. I don't do it that much. So I'd like to understand what the pros and cons of tenting your meat after you take it out to rest. I think the point of resting is just to rest. But anyway, let's cut this bad boy open. Now I like to cut this way. Yeah, look at that. That is perfect pink in the middle. So I cut it so that there are little strips. Oh, now the bugs are here, everyone. <laughs> so there are little strips. So as you can see, this will be perfect for salad and then or in a beautiful bowl with some rice just a few strips and then some veggies and this is a really manageable sized piece of meat so i think in the recipe i recommended two pounds i think i've only done a pound and a half on this guy um, and this will be perfect for my husband and i for dinner um, and then i've got another one so yeah <laughs> meal for the week <laughs> All right, nicely done. Thank you, Sandra. Um, <laughs> let's see. Any other questions while I'm here? Shall I taste this? I'm going to give it a try. That was really good. So, one final note. I want to reiterate this. With this particular marinade, because your fish sauce is very salty, I don't salt my meat. I know that's a thing that a lot of people do um, because salt adds flavor and you absolutely should do that. But in this case, the fish sauce acts as the salt and soy sauce would do the same. So you don't wanna add any extra salt. And because it's marinating overnight, that salt will get into the meat from the fish sauce or soy sauce and really create that flavor. So. You don't need to worry about adding extra salt. So this is my beautiful piece of meat. I'm so excited about it. And it's going to be dinner and a nice little snack. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Um, just a reminder that there will be no poll for Thursday because um, we are not cooking the loser of the poll recently, which would be the salmon. The recipe is available on colavita.com, so head over there and get that. But instead, we are making a wild card, and I will keep you on the edge of your seats to see what that will be. We won't be outside, I'll tell you that much. 
unless something very strange happens. Um, we'll be back in the regular studio. So please join me Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And if you have any other questions, the steak is good so far. It's really, really good. <laughs> if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, like our page on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, one or the other, Colavita USA, and sign up for our newsletter on colavita.com. And thank you. I love seeing you guys, digitally speaking, every Tuesday and Thursday. So ciao for now and buon appetito.